Welcome back to Live Now from Fox 651 here on the East Coast and giving you a live look at the White House there in Washington, D.C. As you all know, the race to the White House is on this morning. And speaking of the race to the White House, you know, we are just one day away from what could be the defining event in the 2024 race for the White House. Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump are scheduled for their first and perhaps only debate tomorrow night. Fox News correspondent Doug Luzader has more this morning from Washington on how the candidates are preparing. 90 minutes in Philadelphia tomorrow night, and we're seeing two very different approaches to this debate. Are you ready, Madam Vice President? Ready. And that was about it from Vice President Kamala Harris, out for a stroll with her husband during a break from what a number of reports describe as intense debate prep in Pittsburgh. She also emerged briefly on Saturday to visit a nearby spice store. I finally got out of the debate prep to look at these spices. Best part of debate prep so far. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. A former President Donald Trump held a rally in Wisconsin over the weekend. He's often discounted traditional practice sessions, and he says it's not a level playing field. If I destroy her in the debate, they'll say, Trump suffered a humiliating defeat tonight. No matter what. The Harris campaign has also complained, saying rules that require muted microphones to prevent interruptions are a disadvantage for her. And let's be honest, you know, Donald Trump is the best counterpuncher in the history of American politics. Democrats are trying to tamp down expectations for Harris ahead of the debate. But there was a sobering New York Times poll over the weekend for the Harris campaign, showing a neck and neck race in which much of Harris's post convention bounce may have disappeared. One Republican strategist urged Trump to stick to the issues. If the debate is about personality and she can get under his skin, I think that uh, is much better territory for the, for the Harris campaign. Well, it looks like both candidates are going to remain off the campaign trail today in advance of the debate with just one day to go. In Washington, Doug Lusader, Fox News. Doug, thank you so much and joining us live this morning to further discuss the anticipated 2024 presidential debate. None other than political historian and analyst Rich Rubino. Happy Monday, Rich. Good morning to you. Thank you. Good morning to you as well. So a lot of people looking ahead to this presidential debate. If we can first look back in time, the last time we saw a presidential debate was with former President Donald Trump and current President Joe Biden. And for many people, it was difficult to watch, Rich. Uh, compare and contrast what we saw then to what we could see tomorrow, please. Right. Well, there was actually Joe Biden. I think his campaign tried to lower expectations, but he still did very poorly. And inevitably, he landed up dropping out of the race as a direct result of that. I don't think anyone expects this to happen with Vice President Harris. She's still relatively young. She has She's done pretty well in past debates to go back to her time as running for attorney general, running for DA, running for vice president. She did have one poor performance, and that was with um, when Tulsi Gabbard kind of caught her off guard about her record as a prosecutor in terms of marijuana convictions. But other than that, she's been she's been OK in terms of these debates. I don't think I would necessarily expect. So I think the real question is going to be what's going to happen on the other side with President Trump and how will President Trump will perform? Um, is there any way that will Vice President Harris will she get a rattle? Will they try to stick to the issues or will it become like in the previous debate or the debate between Joe Biden and, and Donald Trump in 2020 more or less about um, personalities than about policies? Absolutely, Rich. And we know it was a long time coming to get to this point, right? Former President Donald Trump has his standards of how he wanted the debate to go, and so did VP Harris. Uh, you raised a great point about what the former president might do to come out on top during this debate. And many people think uh, one of his plans might be to tie in um, Harris to Biden. So basically saying what he thinks are the failures of the Biden administration, putting that on Harris. Could you put that into perspective, yeah. please? Yes. Well, the last time we had an unpopular president whose vice president was running to succeed him would have been 1968. And the Nixon campaign tried to run against President Johnson as much as they tried to run against Vice President Humphrey. And they tried to tether um, unpopular policies with the Johnson administration toward Hubert Humphrey. I think they're going to see this very, seri very similar situation. And this time around, he obviously is going to try to tie the inflation and tether it to Vice President Harris, he's going to constantly talk about the Biden Harris administration. Um, he's going to talk, he might even bring up the other thing he might do is he might try to call her a San Francisco liberal. 
That was a term that came out of the Republican, uh, out of Republican Gene Kirkpatrick, a former Democrat, after the Democrats held their convention in 1984 in San Francisco, and it was perceived as mo it was perceived um, as very as a very liberal convention that nominated Mondale and Geraldine Ferraro. So I think that's basically going to be his kind of boilerplate strategy, if you will, try to tether. Vice President Harris to unpopular policies, including the econ including economic policy, the Biden administration, and also con consummately trying to tie her, um, at trying to tr trying to bring make the case that she is a San, a San Francisco liberal or an out of touch liberal, which is kind of typical uh, playbook of the Republicans against the Democrats. Absolutely. And on the flip side, Rich, uh, what do you think it'll take for uh, VP Harris to shine during this debate? We saw what Biden did, and it was a lot of mudslinging, right? Bringing up uh, the former president's charges and court appearances and all of that. I think he, she's going to try to, first of all, she's going to probably try to, at the beginning, to kind of ignore President Trump, try to be above the fray, if you will. I think she thinks that the, she really, in her case, I think she has her base basically sewn up. It's a little... There's a little wiggle room on the left, and there are some people that might vote for the Green Party candidate, Jill Stein, or Vi or Cornell West running independent. But generally speaking, she has her base sewn up. So she really needs to has send a message, an economic message, if you will, that she's there to help the tens of thousands of voters in those seven swing states that are so important this time around, why her economic policies will help, why it's why it's time, why there were certain things that President Biden did that were popular, like, for example, bringing down the price of insulin, even though it was without mentioning for specific specifically the name Joe Biden. So that's kind of what I think she's going to try to do, but I think she's going to try to not get rattled no matter what kind of excoriation she receives on the part of Donald Trump. Rich, as we saw with the previous debate with Biden and Trump, we know sometimes those one-liners can be entertaining, right? For many of yep. the viewers, it is. But for others, you know, they don't care about the mudslinging. They don't care about the one-liners. They care about hearing the answers to the questions. Do you think we will actually get those answers? Because for some of the candidates, when it comes to these debates, even some interviews, if we're being honest, it seems like there's a lot of walking around the issues and no definitive answers. It reminds me a little bit of back in 1988 when Democratic nominee Mike Dukakis was talking about how to how he would um, close the, bud the budget gap, and George H. W. Bush went right at it and said, "Is this the time for one-liners?" That answer is as clear as Boston Harbor. So he actually said specifically it was time for one-liners. But I think that the uh, there certainly are American people. There are there are there there are those very small subgroups of actual swing voters in showdown states that are going to be looking for substance but usually in a debate the reason it, politicians rarely answer questions directly they don't necessarily lie. Sometimes they mislead. Or what? The, what? What likely happens when you when you're asked a question you really don't want to answer? What you do is you try to answer it in two or three sentences. Then you pivot. You're pivoting and you move over to speaking about something that is completely unrelated. That's what happens pretty much. That's what happens pretty much in just about every debate. It's about staying on message. It's about getting your message out. Uh, the best example I can think of for that. 1994, George W. Bush is running for governor of Texas against Ann Richards. Ann Richards would give uh, would give would give answers to questions that she would answer the question. George W. Bush, no matter what you said, he would say, "Well, our children need to read. We need welfare reform, and we need tort reform." And people got the message the next day because those were three things that had pulled very well on the part of the Bush campaign in that election. And Bush landed up upsetting Ann Richards. Rich, you see why we like to call you a political historian. My goodness, you can just spit out those facts left <laughs> and right. We'd love to see it. Uh, Rich, when it comes to those hot topics, what do you think those will be? For many people, it's immigration, it's the economy, it's uh, how much groceries cost when they go to the grocery store. Yes, it really will be those kitchen table issues. It's going to be those economic issues. Donald Trump will try to tether the fact that they that the economic situation is currently does not favor the Democrats. Um, Vice President Harris will try to say that unemployment is actually lower. Then she's going to she, she, the problem with the Democrats is from a macro standpoint the economy looks pretty good, but Americans are not feeling it, and in part because of the um, because of the, what they view as a high inflation. So she has to say that the inflation is coming down and that the economy is actually doing very well. Vice uh, President Trump will say essentially that in day one he's going to get in there and he's going to propose an economic plan that will um, that will decrease inflation and that he can have a better economy. And that's kind of, in a sense, Trump will say the economy is better in my administration. Vice President Harris will say that you actually lost jobs in your administration, that type of a thing. The other thing you're going to hear about from Vice President Harris as many times as possible is re is uh, is abortion rights because it's an issue that ever since the overturning of Roe v. Wade with the Dobbs decision has tended to favor the Democrats. Last time around, 
in the midterm elections in 2022, the Democrats did much better and actually picked up a seat in the House of Representatives, which, at the Senate rather, which is almost unheard of, in part because of reproductive rights. They're going to try to make the case that Donald Trump becomes president, that he will nominate more conservative Supreme Court justices, and that there's no chance that Roe v. Wade, that that the Dobbs decision rather would be would be overturned, um, and they would go back to the Roe standard or the Roe Casey standard, if you will. So, I think those are that's going to be kind of this, and maybe perhaps a sleeper issue, but it's worked on many referendums around the country, and there's actually one in Florida um, where Donald Trump has kind of waffled on so far. Rich Rubino, always a pleasure to talk politics with you. Thank you so much for joining us bright and early this Monday morning, one day away from that anticipated Exciting. 2024 presidential <laughs> debate. Look, I'm excited as well. I can't wait to watch. I'll actually be a spectator watching from my house when that happens. So, look, we'll have to catch up on uh, Wednesday uh, to see how this played out, and I'd love to get your thoughts. Always a pleasure, Rich. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, anything else you'd like to add before we let you go? Just that this is going to be in this debate will be in Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania is probably the most critical swing state in the country. It has 19 electoral votes, and no Democrat has won the presidency without carrying Pennsylvania. This is without carrying the carrying the carrying Pennsylvania since Harry S. Truman in 1948. So it's the state the Democrats absolutely positively have to win. Republicans can win without it. It'll be very it'll be harder, but it's possible. But it's almost, it's almost, it's virtually impossible, and I really can't envisage in any scenario where the Democrats win the presidency without carrying the state of Pennsylvania. Rich Rubino, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. You as well. Thank you.